YouTube, what is good? It's your man Ribs from Doing Film Things. Every single week I drop a new video about film photography. So if that's your thing, definitely go ahead and subscribe. This week I'm gonna tell you one of my deepest, biggest, darkest secrets. You ready for this? I own 15 film cameras. I know that might not surprise some of you and it might be surprised to some of you. Either way, that's the truth. I don't have them all here. I've got two more in New York City that I left there that I haven't been using, but in total, I've got 15 film cameras. And of course that spans a collection, including various types of cameras and kind of all different formats and that kind of thing. So they're not all the same, which is obviously good. But today I wanna to walk you through all of my different film cameras and also tell you why I have 15. I don't intentionally collect cameras. That's not really what I'm into but I find that I'm attracted to different types of cameras and find uses for each different kind. So over the last year or so, I've grown from about, let's say two to three cameras to what I have now. So we're gonna talk about each different category and then at the end, and I'll put the time card here, I'm gonna show you exactly what my thoughts are about why I have this many cameras and ultimately why I don't think this is too many cameras. So stay tuned for that. All right, so the first cameras I wanna to talk to you about are my 35 millimeter SLRs. Got two right here and then another one right here. So these SLRs are actually some of my most used cameras, especially these two right here and especially my Canon 300V. 300V and kind of my automated SLRs in general, they're just extremely versatile. I have a bunch of lenses for the Canon system and therefore these cameras help me get the job done. Anything I need, I can adapt to those cameras and get really, really great shots for 35 millimeter. So if it matters for me to have the versatility and to be able to switch lenses and to kind of do all those different things, then I make sure to bring one of those two cameras. If that's less important and I kind of just want something that's nice to carry around but still has that SLR style and function, then I'll bring my Olympus OM-20. And the OM-20 is great because it's very compact, it's small, it's a beautiful camera, and of course it's an SLR. So I'm used to using that system and therefore I rely on that. Now I actually have a Canon 7, which is a rangefinder camera, but it's kind of in the same general feel of those 35 millimeter SLRs. The Canon 7 is a bit heavier than my other SLRs, but it's kind of the same size and it's great. I just strap on a prime lens and just walk around and kind of use it like a street photography camera. So the OM-20 and the Canon 7 are really good for that because they're both small and compact and they're also very good looking. So I get some style points in the street, unlike when I use my Canon SLRs that are the automated fully electronic ones. So 35 millimeter is kind of my prime go-to and I'd say that's about 70% of my work, especially now that I'm printing a lot since my enlarger can only handle 35 millimeter. When I decide to scale up and get a bigger and larger, then I'll kind of potentially use some of my medium format a little bit more. So I do have some point and shoot 35 millimeter cameras as well. I've got two right here. One is the Canon AF-M2 and the other one is the Nikon L35TW. Both of those are great point and shoot cameras. You put the film in there, close it. You don't have to focus, you don't have to do anything. The camera takes care of the rest, which is great. They've got built-in flashes as well. So these are perfect for kind of just walking around, maybe going to parties, hanging out on vacation. You know, all the fun stuff we used to do before the virus took over. So those cameras are very kind of good and compact and they're fully plastic, which means, you know, they're not extremely durable, but if you do break one of these, you could replace them potentially fairly easily. Although um, the AF-M2 is not that cheap but the L35TW is a little bit cheaper. So in general, these cameras are great and they're a nice kind of complement or supplement, you would say, to the um, more functional 35 millimeter SLRs where I can do a lot more and kind of strap on a lot more lenses and, and do some more serious photography with those. My last 35 millimeter camera is actually this one right here. This is a 3D printed uh, Scura pinhole camera. And it's very interesting because pinhole typically, as far as I'm concerned, is usually reserved for medium format, but here, I can do so in 35 millimeter, which is great. So it's a really cool camera and I built it myself out of the parts that arrived in the mail. It took an hour or two to assemble and it's pretty cool to, to have something like that. It's a nice, interesting showpiece and something good to talk about, especially when you're out taking photos. All right, so moving on to medium format. I became really intrigued with medium format last year when I started shooting a bit more of that. And since then, my kind of interest has spiraled quite a bit. My first medium format purchase was actually this folder right here. And this is the Zeiss Icon Netter. It's a really old version and it has um, not the best lens or the best shutter, but it's great. And it does six by nine negatives, which is fantastic and big. So that was my first foray into medium format. And soon after that, I realized that I needed some actual more functional medium format. And therefore I got this, which is my Bronica ETRS. 
Um, and the ETRS is amazing. It's a modular system. You basically put it in the same category as the Hasselblad and it allows me to do everything that's really good for a studio and also for shooting outdoors. It's modular, so I've got a bunch of different lenses, different viewfinders you can switch out, and of course, different film bags. And I love that camera. I'll never be getting rid of it. And it's a fantastic studio portrait camera or just portrait camera in general. It's a 645, which means I get 15 images to a roll of 120. Um, I don't really appreciate the square format as much, especially for portraits. So 645 gives me not only more photos, but helps me kind of work better with my composition that's in my mind. I do like square though, um, and I've actually jumped into that with this camera right here, which is my Agfa Isolette, which is another folder. So I've got two folders and I've got one medium format SLR. Um, and back to the Agfa. The Agfa is a square format folder and it's actually a really handy camera. It's also beautiful. I got mine in amazing condition and it's a little bit more versatile than the Icon Netter because I've got a couple extra shutter speeds. Um, I've got a built-in rangefinder that I can use to measure the distance from my subject. And overall, it's just, it's a bit younger, let's say, than the Icon Netter since this one is probably from the early 40s. This camera, I think, is now creeping into the mid to late 50s, which brings a lot of added functionality that is helpful for the shooter. So, love my medium format folders. I'll probably buy a couple more of these as time goes on because they do kind of have different things. So anyways, three medium format cameras displayed there. Got another medium format one here, which is, this is one of my more recent acquisitions. This camera is technically not mine. It was loaned to me by a really good friend, but it's kind of a long-term loan. My friend doesn't really plan on using it and knows that I appreciate it and will use it. So he basically said, here you go, have this camera and you know, take a bunch of photos with it, see what you feel. And so far, I really like this camera. I'll admit I'm not great with it. It's not easy to use for me. And I miss my focus a lot, which is annoying when I'm doing portraits. With landscapes, it's a bit easier because you stop down and you, you know, it's kind of harder to miss the focus. But with portraits, it's been really tough. And this has a 2.8 lens, which makes it one of the more premium um, Rolleiflex cameras, which I love. But again, kind of difficult to use. I'm gonna keep using it a bit more to see if I can get a better hand on it. But so far, it's been a bit challenging. So that wraps up my medium format cameras. Um, we'll move on now to my single large format camera, which is what you see right here. This is my beautiful uh, crown graphic and I love this camera. I just got it recently and I've been messing around with it learning kind of the ropes of 4x5 and of course the ropes of just this specific camera as well. And so far, so good. I have messed up two rolls, or not rolls, two individual sheets of film which is very unfortunate especially because it was Portra 400. It's not cheap but that's part of how you learn. So I'm loving this experience so far and I'm planning very soon to get in the studio with this and do some proper portraits because ultimately that's why I want this camera because the look that you get in portraits given that the lens has to produce a giant negative um, it's just so different from what you get from medium format and of course 35 millimeters just a very different look so very excited to put this through the ropes and kind of get more acquainted with it and then lastly I've got one single instant camera which is this one right here I'll admit to you out of all the cameras that are on this table this is the only one that I've never used um, it's actually kind of dusty, which I should probably clean it and then store it away properly. But um, I just bought it from a friend who just didn't want it and I got a really good price. So I did it just cause, and then I haven't done it since or haven't used it since. So my plan is to take this with me whenever I go on a trip soon, hopefully, and actually prop off some proper instant camera shots. Um, I'm not really that into instant photography, um, but I do think this is pretty cool and it's definitely a valuable addition. All right, so that's all my cameras. What do you think? Do I have too many cameras? Do I not have enough cameras? I know some of you are probably thinking this is a weak collection. So if I don't have enough, let me know what I'm missing. I'm really curious. What kind of camera or what category do you think I'm missing to complete that kind of versatile, diverse selection that I have? And if I have too many cameras, what is the magic number? Where do you draw the line? Let me know in the comments. All right, so I'll tell you my view right now. I don't think I have too many cameras. My partner would say otherwise since we share a space and these kind of take up a lot of her space, but Nonetheless, I don't think I have too many cameras. And the main reason why I don't think I have too many cameras is the fact that my collection currently is very diverse. But for my personal use, I actually get something different from each one of these different cameras. And in buying these cameras, I've made sure to choose cameras that are servicing a different need or requirement in terms of how I shoot. So for example, as I said, when I need versatility and when I need access to different lenses, 
that's what these workhorses are for, my two Canon SLRs, especially this one right here, which is the one, the single camera on this table that I use the absolute most. This was my first film camera, by the way, my EO650, but I wanted something smaller and a bit more functional, and that one is much newer, therefore it has more modes and more functionality. So anyways, I need versatility in terms of actual use, and that's what that camera gives me. However, if I don't need something that needs all that versatility, that's why then I go to these 35 millimeter cameras right here. So again, being able to do different things with different cameras is key. The other thing is formats. That's kind of the most obvious distinction here. You've got 35 millimeter, you've got medium format, and now you've got large format. And of course you've got instant. These different formats have different benefits depending on the situation. Doesn't mean one is better or worse than the other for something specific, but if you want to use one for a particular reason, for example, portraits, I love shooting medium format because I don't need as many photos for my portraits. And I love having that large negative. And I also love the bokeh that you get from medium format images because the lens has to produce that larger negative. And that goes even more to say with this large format one here. So that's very important. And therefore having different formats at the very least matters to me as well. Um, the other thing has to do with portability. So we talk about medium format. I love my Bronica and it's extremely functional. I've got different lenses, but this camera is heavy, which is why I would never take this with me on a trip. As versatile as it is, for medium format, I, I don't need that as much when I'm traveling or when I'm visiting new locations. Therefore, having a folder like this is incredible because that folding camera is so compact. You literally close it up, you can shove it in a pocket, you can shove it in your jacket, put it anywhere. You don't need any real space because it's so small and packs away very nicely. So that distinguishes this medium format camera from the other. The last thing I'll say is that I actually shoot a lot. Um, film photography is, is one of my passions and therefore I'm out there constantly shooting whether it's just for the sake of getting out and shooting or because I'm doing something that I think would be nice to document or whether I'm doing a targeted shoot where I'm providing a service to someone else, for example, for portraits. So that matters a lot and I shoot so much, I think I can justify having these different cameras given that none of them will kind of sit around and collect dust except for this Polaroid here, which unfortunately I haven't really given much use to, well, no use to at all. So if you shoot a lot, having multiple cameras does not become unnecessary. It just means you have kind of a toolkit or an arsenal that you can use for different things. If you're not shooting a lot, then maybe it's not worth having more than a couple cameras because at that point, you're not shooting enough to get use out of all of them and therefore you probably will end up with something that collects dust. Think about how much you're shooting and that will probably help you decide whether you need just a couple cameras, maybe two, three cameras, or maybe you can have 15 like I do. So that's the video for today. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please go ahead and give me a like as I would really appreciate that. And of course, if you have not subscribed, go ahead and subscribe. Look at all these cameras. I use these all the time and I create awesome content with all of these different cameras. So you don't want to miss any of that. That's all I got for you today, YouTube. Peace.